Kobe Bryant went into the Hall of Fame uh, yesterday along with Tamika Catchings and a few others, but uh, yeah. obviously the Kobe Bryant was the centerpiece of that. Uh, did you ever have the fortune of having any interactions with him or what was – you know, what did he mean to you, or your game, all of that? I mean, that was uh, an era that you grew up in. Yeah. And that guy, he was he was the guy of his era, man. Yeah, Kobe was slightly younger. So the connection I have with, will be another blast of the past, and God rest his soul as well, is Jason Collier. That was Jason Collier, Kobe, McDonald's All-American. I remember talking to Jason about Kobe, you know, talked about a couple of things. Um but but uh, one of the things I've always loved about Kobe, if you really studied him or understood him, is his, I would say, infatuation with Michael Jordan, where he made it no secret he copied, he imitated everything he, everything Jordan did, and and that's one of the, I mean not that might be another show, but just how how he did it, and and how he was a student of the game, he understood the origins of the game. Um, and he was different, right? He didn't care about, you know, making friends and, and, and he wanted to win at all costs. And I think it showed early on, like Michael Jordan. Um, so that, that, you know, just, just what knowing, but no, also seeing Kobe open up too, Jim, I think as his career started to come towards an end, he started to open up a lot more, uh, to teammates, uh, I think start warming up. I, th I think he got out of his winning ways and winning phase. So, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately, what happened to him on that Sunday uh, morning to me, I think it was afternoon, mor mid-morning, um, you know, his demise. But, man, uh, what, what a guy. Yeah, he had that same drive that Michael Jordan had because that, to me, is what drove made Michael Jordan yep. great. Yep. That, that motor that just would not stop. And Kobe Bryant yeah. seemed to have that same thing of, I don't care who it is, what it, I'm gonna, I got it, I've got to be above that. I've got to go longer, score more, do whatever. And that just seemed like it every time out. That was his drive. Yeah, I mean, think about it too, and not to go off of Kobe, but like think about Michael Jordan's generation where there were no film study, there was there was no video. You more so admire somebody, and you took their traits, what I would call, you imitate the greats, how I say it, by just watching them, right? Watch them on TV if you could. Kobe studied Jordan. And Jordan, you know, if you watch any in interviews, Jordan would say, hey, Kobe might be the only person who can beat me one-on-one -on -one because he studied me, right? Michael Jordan just did it. Kobe studied him. So he knew every which way, but Jordan still would have the upper hand. I, I love a story. I I'm done in 30 seconds. Uh, B.J. Armstrong said we at dinner. With, with Michael and Kobe, and it was as if they were out, like at a tennis match because they were going back and forth on what they would do to each other on the court. Uh, you know, hey, you got you weak over here. I'm gonna attack you this way. I'm gonna do that. He said literally like they was on the basketball court, and I'm just in amazement watching these two guys talk about what they're gonna do to each other and how competitive they were. So I bet that was, I mean, to be able to fly on the wall that day was probably being pretty amazing. And that's the thing about both of those guys, the two competitiveness. That may be the greatest uh, that's the top. That's uh, thing top. that they had. They were yeah. both the most yeah. uber competitive people yeah. uh, in, in the world. I mean, it was yeah. – and that's yeah. something you can't coach, can't teach, can't give, can't can't create. You nah. either have it and it's fed and just continues to, to grow or you don't. Well, you got to think about this. Another, another thing, again, might be another topic, but it's called primal cues, right? So now I'm getting into my play loving ways. Well, I believe Jordan was the youngest kid out of all of his siblings. And typically the youngest kid is the one that normally has to play catch up. And the, the one that they normally have to say, hey, come on, get up, let's go. So I think he was driven from within from his family. Because I remember his brother, with his, it was, his brothers would always beat him. He could never beat his brothers, right? Um, so, so it's kind of interesting when you think about that. You go – study stuff like this, you'll see like a lot of sprinters, they were like uh, 3.4 out of four kids. They always had to play catch up. <laughs> they always had to be the one that was in lagging, but they had to become the fastest people in the world. Yeah, it's just uh, my favorite story, and I've said this before, 
and this is Michael Jordan instead, though. It, it was from uh, uh, the last dance when they were talking about, because you talk about competitiveness and how it comes in different ways. Right. Den Dennis Rodman is yeah. that same. He just had a motor that, and his come from a different place. These That's guys right. wanted to be the best in the world. That's right. Den Dennis wanted to prove he belonged. That's right. He, he wanted was to that. good. That's right. That's right. That's right. And man, he just had this, a different kind of motor, uh, but it would not stop. It just went, and it was just relentless. And you well, can't do anything. You can't do anything with that, man. <laughs> well, and, and one of the things that, again, if you if you were to if you were to know Dennis Rodman coming out of junior college, he was a scorer. He averaged over seventeen points a game. What he did was he altered his game when he was at Detroit Pistons. Say, hey, look, I got all these guys who can score the ball, what's one thing I can do? It's what I call, again, finding your top 20 skill set. What's one thing I can do that no one's really willing to do? That's rebound. And, I mean, that, that motor came from those, you know, won't stat, you know, won't stuff the stats per se, but I will rebound and extend plays. And that, to me, is the cool thing about him. He found his top 20 skill set, and he did it to his – to his abilities, right? To where it allowed him to do all those crazy things off the court, too. <laughs> I, I, what did he end up winning? Four or five rings? Exactly. exactly. I mean, that's not an accident. No. It was no. not an accident. No, man. He became a professional rebounder. He would say, man, Jordan would, you know, Coach Fallon would say the same thing to me, in a sense. Hey, Charlie, any rebound that goes from that shot, any ball shot left will go right, run to the right side. Dennis will start doing the same thing. He said, well, I knew when Scotty shot, on the right side, I'm running to the left side, and vice versa for Mike. Like you became, he became a professional rebounder. That was his job to extend plays, defense take away second chance opportunities, offense extend offense. That became his job, and that's to me those second chances is what really did it for him. 